Hi guys, how are you doing? And welcome back. I've already made some videos about installing VCF and then that was for VCF 5.1. In the meantime, VMware has released VCF 5.2 and that's what I'm going to show you in this video, how to set that up, but not only set it up using the Cloud Builder appliance, but set it up using only one NSX node. That one NSX node option is very important if you're running a lab or a demo environment. It will cut down on the resource usage, but you will still have all the features and functionality of VCF with NSX. So that's what we're going to do basically. Uh, the steps are the same as for VCF 5.1, so I will link all the videos I made for the preparation part for VCF 5.1 in the, below this video, and you can check them out. Uh, of course, the first thing is you will have to get that spreadsheet, fill out that spreadsheet with all your deployment parameters. After that, we upload the spreadsheet to the Cloud Builder appliance using SSH and, and WinSCP. We need to convert that spreadsheet to a JSON file, download the JSON file, remove those extra entries for NSX in there. We only leave one NSX node in there and then go back to the web interface of the Cloud Builder, upload the JSON file and now the Cloud Builder um, will deploy VCF using only one NSX node. So that's it, basically what we're going to do, but let's get into it. All right, here we are at the Cloud Builder Appliance. This is the graphical into the web GUI, basically. So um, we can log in here and we can see it's up and running and ready to deploy um, VCF. But before we do that, we need to convert that spreadsheet. This is the new spreadsheet. Let's look at it. There are some changes compared to the previous one. And especially if you look at the host tab, um, the host and networks tab, there are some changes in here. So if you have that spreadsheet from your VCF 5.1 deployment, you can just compare both spreadsheets and see what the difference is, uh, of course, and then use that VCF 5.1 spreadsheet as a source to fill in the 5.2 spreadsheet. Um, filling in is not a it's not a difficult exercise. You just make you need to show that you have the several networks configured in your firewall, which you will be using um, for the network part, of course. And then uh, you have the different VLANs in there. You have your DNS and your NTP in there. You can see if you go to the deployment parameters, there is some information needed here as well. Just fill in these spreadsheets according to the information which is required, and one thing I changed here is make sure that you do a medium deployment of the NSX node. The reason why is if you choose the small deployment size, it will still deploy NSX, but NSX is very resource intensive. So that means if it's small, it will be sized um, small uh, for the CPU and the memory. And then, uh, well, it, it will hit the performance of that NSX node. Uh, so I find deploying a medium size NSX node, that's the way to go. So if you have filled in everything, make sure that you fill in the correct passwords. Um, in VCF 5.2, we have some new password requirements in there. So that means um, you it, it means it must be at least 15 characters and it needs to contain one of these um, characters in there as well. So make sure that you fill in the sheets um, accordingly and you have your meeting the password policy, fill in the host and networks and deployment parameters, save the sheet, and then you're basically ready to upload this sheet to the Cloud Builder appliance using SSH. That's what I'm going to do now because it needs to convert it to a JSON. And if you go to my website, this is the website, and of course, I will leave those commands again in the description of this post. And also on YouTube, you will find it in the description field. If you go to this post on my website and scroll down below the video, this is for VCF 5.1, you can see the commands I use to generate that JSON file. So in the spreadsheet, we still have three NSX nodes. We will download, we will convert this to a JSON file using the commands here. We will copy the JSON file so we can download it. And after that, we will need those, or we will remove those two nodes in there. So what we're going to do is start up WinSCP. Let me log into my Cloud Builder. There we are. We are in the home slash admin. 
And if I'm going back to my spreadsheet, this is the 5.2 deployment spreadsheet. So let's minimize this one and quickly upload the spreadsheet to my home directory. So if, let's go into the upload option. Now the spreadsheet has been uploaded to Cloud Builder. So the next part is to convert it to that JSON. So we need to log in here using the admin account and copy over that password real quickly. Enter the password here. And now we are in the Cloud Builder SSH interface. Let's see where we are. We are in the home slash admin directory. That's the same directory you're seeing here in WinSCP. If I do an LS, I can see that my spreadsheet is there. And the first thing we need to do is become super user. Let's do that. And this, this is the admin password you're, um, you're entering here when deploying the Cloud Builder appliance using that OVA. It will ask you for a admin account. Make sure that that password is 15 characters long, has one of those special characters in there. So now we can log in. So the next thing is to convert that spreadsheet to a JSON. This is the command used. So what I've done is beforehand create, just copy over that command and adjusted the parts I want it to use. As you can see here, this is the file name. Make sure that you have that correct. And I want it to generate it in that, um, that folder. It will create that folder. I will show you in a minute where that is. So this is what you need and um, to convert that spreadsheet into JSON. So when you have made sure that everything is correct, let's copy over this one, copy, go back to SSH, the terminal, and just paste it out here. In my case, I've already done this on this Cloud Builder appliance. So it will ask me, do you want to replace it? Yes, I want to replace it. If you have not done the conversion of the spreadsheet to JSON, it will of course not be there that file and it will it won't ask you to replace it so i've done that already and i want to replace it and that's exactly what it has done now the file can be copied over because we need the json file right the json file has still three nsx nodes and we need to remove two of the nodes and that's the way we do that is is to um alter to um, alter the JSON file. So that's exactly what we're going to do. That goes to WinSCP once again. On the left side, you can see I have some testing file sets as well. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you where that JSON file is because it is basically in this directory in the resources uh, directory. So if I use my WinSCP to just browse to that directory, go to VMware, go to SDDC support, and then I have the cloud admin tools. You can see that the resources directory has been created there. Just double click it. You can see that that folder has been created there as well. This is from my command line for the conversion. And if I enter that folder, I can see that JSON file in there. This is the JSON file you need to download. After you've downloaded the JSON file, well, let's do that. So I'm using Notepad++ to do editing of the JSON file. Um, so if you open the JSON file, the, you will see that everything is just in one line. Uh, this is a little bit, um, well, it's not very readable and I'm sure you can get an editor which will display it correctly. But you need to find the NSXT managers part in here and then we need to delete the second and the third node. So the way you do it is you select starting the comma after the uh, the first node you just start here and up until the square hook at the end don't delete that square hook but this is the part we need to delete from this file because this is the configuration for the second and the third nsx node we're going to delete that i've already done that in my file here only one node that's what we're going to deploy save this json file and now we're ready to upload it to the cloud builder here we are at the Cloud Builder interface, and this is where we need to upload that JSON file. The supported platform is again VMware VCF uh, here, the VMware Cloud Foundation. Click on Next. Make sure that the prerequisites are in place. Yes, we've made sure of that. Click on Next. Click on Next again because it says you need to uh, contact several various people within your in your organization 
in order to fill in that spreadsheet. We have already done that. We are going to select the file. In my case, I've renamed the file VCF5 to EMS single NS6 JSON. Just uh, helps me to keep track of what files are doing what for demo purposes, of course. So this is the file, the JSON file. I already changed to have only one N6 node in there. Let's do, click on next. And now we are starting the process of the Cloud Builder to validate if everything is in place in the JSON file in order to start deployment of VCF. So let's wait for Cloud Builder to finish and get back to the next part. And there we are, the pre-check or the prepare configuration check has been completed uh, based on the JSON file. Remember, this JSON file has only one NSX node. So there are a couple of warnings. It's a demo environment, that's fine. And you can just um, click on the section where the warning is and see what it's uh, telling you. So make sure that you resolve those before um, deploying, of course, in a production environment. So in my case, these are warnings that I'm willing to accept. So I will acknowledge them. And then now I will finally start the deployment of VCF. Click on next there and say, all right, I am ready to deploy SDDC. To click on deploy SDDC. And depending on your, your hardware, on the resources you have, this is a lengthy process. So let's wait for the deployments to start. And there we go. It has started deploying SDDC, it started the bring up part of SDDC. You can see it here, SDDC bring up is in progress and we'll let this process finish and get back to you as soon as it has completed the SDDC deployment, the NSX node deployment, vCenter has been deployed, everything has been configured. You can see all the steps it will go through during the deployment. And when it's finished, we will get back um, and try see if we can log into SDDC. And there we have it. After waiting about one and a half, two hours, it has successfully finished deploying VCF, as you can see here. The only thing for me now is to click on finish and then launch SDDC manager. Let's do that. Click on launch SDDC manager. And of course, we have self-signed certificates there. So I will click on advanced and accept and give it a minute to load the interface. There we are. That's the username and the password are already uh, have set up. Of course, using that spreadsheet, you would define a SDDC and a vCenter password. Those are the passwords here. So click on login. And it should take me to SDDC Manager. Everything is looking great. So let's go to the workload domain. You can see here there is one management workload domain set up. So from here we can take it, take it up and configure the rest of the workload domains uh, for uh, workloads, of course. If I click on that, I can open the NSX Manager. And of course, I have to accept the certificates for the NSX manager in there. Login with the username and password. I also uh, defined in that Excel spreadsheet in that spreadsheet. So I'm logging into NSX and NSX is running fine as well. Let's deny those notifications for now. That's nice. And as you can see here, I am running a one node NSX management node. Um, the recommendation is a three node cluster, of course, but as I said, for a demo or a lab purpose, this should be fine. It should give you all the options and features within NSX and within um, the SDDC manager to keep you going and check out VCF. Uh, of course, um, immediately after you log in for the first time in VCF, you will need to update those licenses. Don't forget that because that's the error I'm getting here. If I click on the error, you can see that all my um, license keys are basically not there. So my whole VCF is running in evaluation mode. You should be able to add those licenses now and fully take advantage of VMware VCF. And that's how I've set up VMware VCF 5.2 in my lab environment, just with one NSX node 
that's running perfectly fine. Everything is working fine. I have all the features. I can do testing. I can do demos. That's all I need. And it consumes a lot less resource compared to if I would run it with a three node cluster. So um, I strongly suggest you try the same setup in your lab environment and benefit from the one node setup within VMware VCF 5.2. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure that you click on the like and subscribe buttons below this video. That helps out my channel a lot. If you have comments, leave them in the comment section below. I will try to get to them as soon as possible. And also, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.